Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Angry Astronaut. So before we get down to some of the grim topics that we're going to be discussing today, talk about some positive stuff here for a moment. Got my uh, British Space Flight t-shirt again for anybody who's interested in that, and I have a German Space Flight t-shirt. Here it is. And uh, that's going to be available in a new store. It was designed by uh, somebody who uh, offered to provide his considerable graphic arts skills uh, to my channel. Really awesome stuff. So we've got a German space flight uh, t-shirt and a bunch of new stuff as well in this new shop. And that is all linked right here and also in the description. Okay, let's move on to Russia and all of that unpleasantness. So it's no secret at all that the West has been making use of commercial satellites in order to provide intelligence information to Ukraine in order to give them a competitive edge in this ongoing conflict. And Starlink and Elon Musk's uh, constellation, that's probably been the most useful thing to the Ukrainian military. Now, Elon's already kind of toyed with the idea of pulling the support or no longer providing it for free or something but has continued to do so in the face of a great deal of criticism. But Russia doesn't seem like they're going to put up with this any longer. And uh, really, I mean, when it comes down to it, these satellites are being used for a military purpose at this point that directly benefits fits Ukraine. And so Russia has identified these satellites as legitimate targets. So what does all of this mean? Well, Russia has already demonstrated their ability to shoot down satellites. They did so causing a great deal of chaos and devastation in low Earth orbit last year, and they could certainly do it again. There's very little that we could do to stop them from destroying Starlink satellites one at a time, and it wouldn't take very long for them to be able to annihilate the entire constellation and everything else in low Earth orbit in the process. Process. Now, one might think that this would be a suicide mission on their part. They would cause as much damage to themselves as they would to everybody else. But actually, that's not really the case. Russia has a plan to survive this kind of scenario. The West really does not. Hello, YouTube. I'm the Angry Astronaut, and this is... So the video you're watching right now just shows one example of Russia's capabilities of knocking down enemy satellites or just about any satellite they want to. They not only have anti-sat weapons based on Earth, they also seem to have them based in space. And we've seen evidence of this with this particular American satellite being stalked by a Russian satellite that maneuvered to get right into its orbital path. Now, this may have just been to spy on it, but there's evidence to indicate that Cosmos 2558 actually has anti-sat capabilities of its own, and it's not the only satellite with these capabilities. This means that Russia theoretically has the capability of knocking down a Starlink satellite without even launching anything from Earth. It might be kind of difficult to determine exactly what knocked down this particular Starlink satellite should they decide to do it, and it would also be an easy thing for them to deny. But if they were to do that, it would send a powerful message to Elon Musk. Stop helping Ukraine, or we're going to knock down what essentially amounts to being your entire economic future. Elon Musk depends so much on the future of Starlink. All of his plans, from Mars to just about everything else, depends on the long-term success of Starlink. Link. And would Elon continue to help Ukraine in the face of such a threat? I kinda doubt it. I'm not sure if he would sabotage everything he's working on right now just to help Ukraine. But then again, Elon being Elon, he might prove to be defiant. So let's say for a moment that Elon does decide to be defiant. Well, it would certainly be within Russia's capabilities to start knocking down his satellites, and they wouldn't need to knock down very many. Perhaps a dozen or so would create a cloud of debris, which ultimately 
would no doubt create a Kessler syndrome, something that I've talked about many times on this channel, a chain reaction of debris destroying satellites, which then creates more debris destroying more satellites until ultimately low Earth orbit became nothing but a lethal cloud of debris destroying every operational satellite in that region. This would plunge the entire planet into economic chaos, an absolute tailspin to an already damaged economy due to the war in Ukraine. This would be cataclysmic on a huge scale, and it would be far more damaging to the West than it would be for Russia. Let me explain why. Russia has a backup network of GPS satellites that's in MEO, mid-range Earth orbit, and that is not going to be subject to the effect of a Kessler syndrome. As you can see, it's well outside the range of low Earth orbit. So what would happen if we retaliated and, say, started knocking down those satellites? Well, as you can see, the only GPS network that would remain to the west is all also in this orbital region, which means if we destroyed Russian satellites in this area, we would run risk of knocking out our own remaining GPS network, something that we would dare not do. So how the hell do you retaliate against something like this? Well, one possible response would be to launch a conventional attack against the site that's launching the anti-SAT weapons. However, this would represent a considerable escalation. In general, the West likes to do a like-for-like -like response. In other words, you destroy our satellites, we destroy your satellites, not you destroy our satellites and we start killing your people, which would be exactly what that kind of strike would amount to. In addition to that, Russian anti satellite missile batteries are well within their territorial boundaries and under the protection of a very sophisticated and integrated air defense system based on the S-400 missile system, something that they haven't really used much in Ukraine at all up to this point and we still don't really know what its true capabilities are. All that we know is that striking any target deep inside Russian territory is going to be very challenging to to say the least, and of course it would also escalate the conflict into full-blown war between Russia and the West, conflict that would very likely go nuclear at some point since Russia's military would stand absolutely no chance against NATO without utilizing nuclear weapons. The question is, would the West want to take that sort of chance? Would anybody? And so that leaves Russia with some degree of flexibility to strike against Starlink. And I think Elon is aware of it, and that's one of the reasons that he's talking about different ways of bringing this conflict to an end. Because to be painfully honest, and you guys know how much I support Ukraine, I really think that they have no obligation whatsoever to give up one square inch of their territory. But principles and reality are oftentimes two different things. Unless the Ukrainian army ends up marching down the streets of Moscow with an ox cart to take Putin to the guillotine, this war isn't going to be ending. Putin is not going to give up until he's either been driven from office or until he gets what he wants, or at least something resembling what he wants. And I think Elon has been keenly aware of that lately and is recommending that Ukraine negotiate for terms now that they're in a good situation. Now that they've gained a temporary advantage, this would be a very good time to negotiate for favorable terms from Russia. But those terms will not include Russia withdrawing completely from Ukrainian territory, which is the only thing Zelensky seems to accept right now. Now, just to be clear, I am in no way advocating that Ukraine give up its territory for good. I think that ultimately, through an insurrection or perhaps through some sort of future offensive after Putin is gone, that would be a good time for Ukraine to try to get its territory back. But right now, it just isn't. The numbers are not in their favor, especially considering that Russia could, in theory, send a thousand of those 
pesky little Iranian drones to attack their infrastructure every single day for a fraction of their overall military budget. And that's just one way that they could attack them. But what is far more pressing is the fact that Russia has seemed willing and able to start knocking down Elon Starlink network, which will have much, much greater consequences than just taking down Starlink. The ISS will probably Probably be destroyed, everything in low Earth orbit will be destroyed, and the Earth's economy will also either be destroyed or very, very seriously damaged to a degree that would make the current economic crisis in Europe look like a joke. That's something that we dare not risk. It's something that we really need to try to avoid, and the best way to avoid it is to end this damn war before things escalate escalate any further. Now, I'm not saying give in to Putin. I'm just saying we need to find a way to bring this war to a conclusion, and just funneling billions of dollars worth of military supplies to Ukraine until they, quote, win, unquote, is just not a winning strategy. There are so many ways that Russia could make the rest of the world pay to a terrible, terrible extent. And every day that this war continues is another day that an escalation like this one could possibly happen. As you've seen in this episode, it doesn't have to be a nuclear escalation. It could be another form of escalation that could still bring ruin to the world's economy and to our civilization civilization without a single nuclear bomb having been dropped, and indeed without a single military strike being directed against the West or Russia. This is something we really need to take seriously, and since we don't really have any effective countermeasures to Russia's anti-SAC capabilities, the best way for us to deal with this is to get out of this conflict one way or another. Smash that like, hit that subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. Once again, to emphasize, I am in no way saying that Ukraine should give up any of their territory here. I don't believe they have any obligation to do that. It's very sad that they're in this situation, but at least for the present, this is the only way out, and I'd love to see your opinions if there's another way to avoid some sort of cataclysm happening in the very near future. So until this damn war finally comes to a conclusion, I urge all of you to stay angry about space.